live. Hey, Tuesday. Happy, happy Tuesday. Hey, Betsy Zama says, happy Tuesday. Can you tell I'm a little dyslexic? This is really bizarre. Just making sure here. I say this every week that I'm going to figure out the tech, but how are you all? I am so excited to hang with you. I'm excited to have this conversation. I feel like we've been mindset heavy the last few weeks in here, which I always love me talking some mindset. It is what is so much underneath business, even when you're managing a team, but I thought it'd be fun this week to talk, uh, talk a little bit more on the strategy leadership side of things. I want to talk about team. I think this is a really important conversation to have because as you're building your business, growing your business, scaling your business, which is what I'm helping my clients with all the time behind the scenes, you might be in the place where you're not ready for team yet. This is something I want to invite you to start thinking about because it's only going to come into play later. And I want you to have some of these tools because I think most of us start our business and aren't always thinking about things like, what does it look like when you bring on team and support? And at a certain level in business, having team is really the only way you're going to be able to continue and grow and scale. Not the only way. I would never say there's only one way, but it's really very important. And then if you already have a team, what I find happens for so many of my clients is they're bringing on team. They're still in the middle of running their business and scaling. There's so many juggling pieces. It's sort of like suddenly there's this whole new thing to learn, which is how do you manage a team? How do you run a team? How do you get a team to support you? How do you help people help you? How do you not make this now your whole new job? Because it is does require effort. It does require time. So want to bring that conversation here today wanted to particularly to talk about two proven ways to manage your team without feeling like a control freak and raise your hand let me know if you identify as being a control freak i will raise both hands i think as entrepreneurs and i mean this in the best way possible i think many of us are control freaks and again i say this in such a positive light i think it's almost a prerequisite if you're a business owner, if you are an entrepreneur to have some sort of a controlling personality and that's what allows you to build your business in the first place. And I find what's very challenging in conversations I'm having with clients a lot as they're bringing on team is, it's sort of like that whole idea of what got you here won't get you where you want to go next. That quality of being a control freak, of being in control of your business, of being in control over the, all the moving pieces serves you to a, up to a certain point. And then you bring on team and suddenly you literally can't be in control of everything. And you literally can't have your fingers in all the pots or sort of like too many cooks in the kitchen. You'll actually like mess up the stew and everything that you're cooking. And it's actually really important to learn how to have that balance of still feeling like you're in control, still being in control as a CEO without trying to be controlling and understanding that difference. And I find, and it's sort of like this mind fuck of like, great. So this is what helped me build my business. How do I still feel that sense of control? How am I still in control as a business owner, managing a team, especially as it grows without being controlling? So we're going to break that down. I have two ideas for you. These are ideas that I practice in my business and I'm supporting my clients with as well. I'll break down some examples. And for context, my, my team has grown over the years. I, I think I'm my first team, first team member two or three years ago. So I started with a team of one and we're now up to five people on my team. So this is something, you know, I've just learned and deepened my knowledge around leadership and managing a team. So Speaking from that experience, but I also have many clients who have much larger teams than, than me. So we're also looking at this through the lens of their business. And I'm bringing, what I'm bringing you today is also proven. I say proven for a reason. This is backed by research and by studies. So not just me. And so this is really based on like what actually works for leadership. And I think some of it's a little counterintuitive, which is why I think it's such an important conversation for us to have. All right, just checking to see, because I know we have a little lag. Let me know also if you're live and if you're watching on the replay. I want to know if you identify as being a control freak. And again, I think that is the best thing ever. I think there's something really beautiful about that, even though, I mean, like from a mindset perspective, we want to know how to let go of control. And I think that's a whole different conversation. I mean this in like a light, fun way. And let me know team-wise if you have a team, if you want a team, if you're building a team, if you're growing a team, what your thoughts are on team. I think it's always just really helpful as we're having this conversation for me to know where you're all at. And then we will dive into these two proven ways to manage your team without being a control freak, being a total control freak, I should say. So the first idea here, and this is something that I 
have adopted in my business and it really came first. I did not realize there was research behind this. I have to say both of the things I'm sharing here, almost happy accidents. And this is my natural leadership style. And it's been really fascinating to read, read the research and see the research that supports both of these ideas and also see how this has really supported clients as well as they're managing their teams. So this first idea here, and the first idea I bring into my business, and I'll, I'll break this down really specifically as to what this looks like with my team. I don't wanna manage people. And I take the mindset in my business that I am not managing people. Now, I know, so like, I know that sounds really counterintuitive because we're literally talking about managing people. And so I will explain what we do instead. So. What I find, and I find this when I'm coaching clients, when I'm managing a team, and this, again, I'll, I'll share the research with you on this, but us humans don't like to be bossed around, and we are, we tend to show up for things more when we think there are, those ideas are our own, and when we are intrinsically motivated, and what I want as a business owner, I don't want to go around managing people. Um, Daniel Pink talks about this in the book Drive. S management is really a, a new concept in business, and it's something that has been adopted, you know, rather recently. That wasn't something that was, you know, way back in the day, something people were doing. And oftentimes management and the way we think about management can almost break down performance and break down motivation and break down results on the back end. And the way I like to think instead of managing a team, and we use this word managing almost as a verb, but I'm talking really about this idea of management in, in terms of like management, not managing. I really like to look at it instead as a leadership role and leading a team and really embodying and stepping into the role of CEO of the business, of being the visionary, of being the leader, and then really being it being my role to be clear and communicate what our goals are, what we are moving towards, what our vision is and supporting the rest of my team and delegating very clearly what they're going to run out, what their, their roles are. Let me know if that part makes sense. And then I'll break this down a little bit, a little bit more. Um, Marie says, I sometimes feel like some men do not like being told what to do by a woman. Yes. I will get to that in three days, three days goes by and it's still not done. Endless misunderstanding, miscommunication, et cetera. Um, Stephanie says, hi, hi, Stephanie. Nice to have you here. I think that's really fascinating. I think I um, I don't know the in terms of like the difference between genders on this. I imagine there probably is some gender dynamics in terms of a man being told by a woman in some cases. I think overall what you're hitting the, uh, the nail on the head. Yes, the nail on the head. That's the right thing. I think what you're hitting the nail on the head here that's really important and really astute is I think in general, none of us like being told what to do. And I think if we're running a team, having really clear communication around deadlines and what we want is also really important. And I think that's where it's that juggle of how do we control without being controlling? How do we lead a team without making them feel like we're being controlling and, and squashing them and telling them what to do? And so I think what you're saying is so spot on and I really appreciate, appreciate that. Um, and that's why really the first idea here that I want to invite everyone to think about is how do we shift from managing or management into leading and leadership? And I think those can sound very similar, but I want you to see that those are two different things. And leadership, if you even think about, we did a live on what leadership is. Leadership is really going first, leading the way, you know, being that visionary versus management. I think of that so much more as controlling, micromanaging, all the things none of us like when we're on the receiving end of. If any of you either still are in a nine to five or a corporate job, or if you left a nine to five or a corporate job or any kind of job where you work for someone else to start your business, you'll have to tell me if you've ever had that experience of being managed versus being led. My guess is part of the reason some of you wanted to leave your corporate jobs is because being managed sucks. Being micromanaged sucks versus being led is really inspiring and, and really inspires people into action. And there's such a difference then in terms of how people show up for the work they're doing, which is really important because if we think about for all of us as small business owners, most of you are going to be running teams virtually. Most I have a few clients who have um, in-person 
teams, you know, in offices, but most of my clients are running teams virtually. And most of myself included, uh, my team is virtual. Most of you are going to have teams where you're working with people who are contractors and they're not working for you full time. And so this adds an extra layer and dynamic of how do you lead a team instead of manage so that they're actually showing up and that you can trust them without feeling super controlling because, you know, one person is in California and another person's in New York and another person's in Australia. And I think there's added dynamics here that can come into play, which if we're not being mindful, we don't understand some of the human behaviors and human drivers, it can be really easy to almost want to get more controlling because it's like, well, how am I going to make sure people are doing what they're supposed to be doing and that my money is going where it's supposed to go and that I'm getting that ROI for my team spend? I'm sure some of you can relate to that. You'll have to let me know if that if that resonates. So what I wanna offer here, and this goes whether we're talking about team or personal motivation or your fitness goals, anything here, what they have found is there's a really big difference between intrinsic motivation and external motivation. External motivation is when we are motivated by literally what it sounds like, external drivers, external forces, money, gold stars, praise, gifts. Internal motivation is when we have something inside of us that is inspiring us to to take action, um, to do work. And what they have found over and over and over again is internal motivation leads to better results, leads to long lasting results where external motivation might give a short-term result but it tends to fizzle out and doesn't lead to those long-term benefits and results. Um, Now, caveat here, this is after people are paid, you know, a, a, a decent salary. So what we're not talking about here is like, get rid of the external motivation and don't pay your people. I am such a big believer in paying your people well, um, but that's a different, whole different conversation. But what we're really talking about here is again, leading versus managing and applying this concept to your business and really understanding how do you motivate a team and how do you motivate and lead a team? So they have buy-in into your business and they want to show up when they're in a different time zone and they want to bring you their best, especially when they're juggling 10 other clients. And what I find is if you can take and adopt this mindset of I'm here to lead, I'm here to be the CEO and lead versus I'm here to manage and control, it shifts the dynamic between you and your team from I'm now here creating external motivation. You're going to get in trouble if I don't, you know, if you don't show up, I'm here to manage you. So you need to rely on me to show up versus internal motivation, which I'll talk about one of the ways um, we've applied this in my business, which means someone wants to show up because there's a reason inside of them. They want to show up there and do the work, regardless of how controlling you are on the other side. If um, any of you have ever stuck to like a any kind of fitness workout, I'm a runner. So I'll use myself as an example. Think about the difference when you're motivated externally I want to lose some weight. I want someone to like me, whatever the thing is, versus when you're motivated internally. I want to feel really good in my body. I have a client who does incredible work around this, and um, I should have her her talk about this. Um, I want to get up and run because it makes me feel so good. I want to beat my own best time. I want to improve um, my running ability or my dancing ability. Such a different driver and motivation. One, when it's external, I just want to lose a couple pounds. What happens? We crash and burn. We kind of get some quick results. We fall off. Versus when it's more internally motivated, we tend to stick to something long-term and get much better results. Same, same here. Really, I've This is my whole approach with coaching. It's why in coaching, we ask questions instead of just telling people what to do. It's such a different motivator and leads to such different results. And this goes for your team as well. And why I think the approach of leading versus management changes and shifts the entire dynamic and creates such a different team where you have a team that you feel fully supported by, who you can trust, who you know is showing up. Not that's in, not that's like perfect and doesn't ever need your support. And that's not what we're talking about here, but it a team that you can support and that also feels like they're supporting you. Um, let me know if this is making sense, y'all. Um, so one of the ways, and I'll just give an example here and then I'll talk about the, the other proven way here. But one of the ways I've been mindful in my business to really think about how am I making sure I'm leading and instead of managing or meeting that management role and how are we really facilitating this mindset and trying to encourage that internal motivation with team is one of the things we did this year and we were doing this when I had a smaller team and now my team's a little bigger. Um, Mindful to have a team meeting. One of the things I'm really 
that's really important for me to communicate with team is this idea that I'm not here to be the expert, that all of them are the expert of their role. And really spending some time in a team meeting, reminding them they're the expert of their role. I trust them. I know that they're good at what they do. And that's to help communicate, like, I'm here to lead you in your role and support you. I'm not here to help, like, like to control you or to micromanage you, but also to spend some time on, and this feels so, 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 I think this is just so important as a leader with a team, really spending some time talking about mission and values in the business, and then helping each team member understand whatever task they're doing, how that is connected to the bigger picture. So they can see some of that internal motivation to do something that on its own might not seem internally motivational to do. So what I mean by that is, we have, you know, everyone has different roles on my team. Let's say someone is scheduling social media graphics for me, as an example. If we just talk about scheduling social media graphics, and, and this is something I had a conversation with one of my team members who really helped me connect the dots to this because she was telling me how, how helpful it is for her to see the bigger picture. So if she's watching this now or later, you know who you are, thank you. Um, but if she's just doing that task alone, it's really hard to connect any in internal motivation for something like scheduling social media graphics. I don't, you know, yes, you might want to do a good job, but it's really hard to connect that to any kind of internal motivation. However, if you can understand what your role, what doing a task like this, how this ties into the bigger picture of the business, how that supports me to do my role, how what we are doing as a business and what some of our values are in terms of supporting other people and what we're helping facilitate. If you can connect some of those tasks to a bigger picture, to a bigger mission, to a bigger value and see how even, um, I want to say even, but how doing something like what might feel like a routine task, how that is part of a whole, that can do a lot to help create some of that internal motivation we're talking about and some of that buy-in we're talking about. The other thing I'm really mindful of, and I'm sure any of you here would do the same with team is really being clear. So not just to be, not just to be the control freak who's pointing out and micromanaging all the things and all the shit I want, which I'm sure my team will tell you I'm super type A. I still have my, my control, the things, you know, I want done a certain way. And I want to help you see that that is very different than being controlling and what we're talking about here in terms of leadership versus management um, is really spending time also letting people know what they're doing well and appreciating what people are doing well and being specific with that appreciation so people can understand, again, how this ties to the bigger picture. Because the more your team can understand what they're doing, how that supports you, how that ties into a bigger picture, the more they're going to be internally motivated to show up. And that's going to create more buy-in, more motivation, which is going to create a more well-oiled team that helps you feel supported, that also a team that has more loyalty and buy-in. I will tell you, one of uh, finding a team that is solid is not an easy thing. I definitely went through my fair share of, of team members. And I think, you know, there's a there's an art to hiring and, and all of that. But I think there's something to remember too. It costs you money every time you burn through team members and bring on new team members. And I think the more we're aware of this, I think the more we can see the importance of things like how do we help support our team? How do we help motivate our team? How do we manage our team without being a total control freak? How can we really step into leading instead of managing? And remember that when we're leading versus managing, that really helps the business holistically as well as each individual team member so that you're really helping them help you. Laura says, hi, hi, love this topic, yay. Um, I'm glad this is resonating, nice to see you. Or not, I feel like I can see you, nice to have you on. Um, Marie says, you're making great or good points. Um, thank you, let me know if y'all have any questions while we're talking about this. And then I will go on to the other proven way um, to see if there was anything here. That's everything I wanted to include here. So the other proven way, and this feels, this feels equally as important, it really ties into, it's kind of a, a second step to what we were just talking about. As humans, we have three basic psychological needs. Um, Daniel Pink talks about this in Drive again. I'm I'm rereading it right this book right now, so it's it's top of mind. Side note: Daniel Pink's work, Daniel H. Pink. He also wrote to Sell as Human and some other books. Really excellent. Um, if you're looking for some of 
the research and the human behavior side to business, I think his work is excellent. And I think he really puts some research to things that you might intuitively know, which can really just be supportive overall with certain business concepts. Anyway, um, he talks about this in terms of the three basic psychological needs, some of our competent human needs. And one of those is autonomy. And I think this is something that is really important for us as business owners with team to think about. If we know one of those core human needs is autonomy, if we're being a control freak and trying to control and manage someone, we're literally pushing against someone's basic human need. Does that make sense? So if autonomy is a core human need, a, a core um, psychological need, and we know this, and we're trying to manage and micromanage and be controlling, does that mean you can't have control? We're talking about how can you have control without being controlling to different things. What we're doing is we're literally pushing against a core human need with our team members. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna create resistance. We're gonna create dissonance. We're gonna create friction in the team. We're going to do the opposite of motivate and manage or really lead here in this case, right? Is this making, is this making sense? So really what we wanna think about is how can we help support and lead our team while still facilitating autonomy, knowing that this is a core human need. And research shows when people are given a sense of autonomy, they perform better, they have more buy-in. Businesses overall get better results. And this is like in big corporations. So if this is good enough for big corporations who have far more team spend than most, most of the business owners in this group, just by sheer volume and, um, you know, other factors, we can assume the same is going to be true for us as business owners. And it's also, I think, a little easier because we don't have so many cogs in the wheel. We don't have so many layers of management that isn't really working to move through to put some of these concepts in place, like how do I create autonomy? How do I facilitate autonomy? How do I create encourage autonomy while still leading a team? Because I know this is a human psychological need, this is going to help motivate and drive someone to intrinsically be motivated to get better results, to show up. This is going to facilitate trust. This is going to create better results overall. Also better creative problem solving. I mean, there's so many, so many ways this will support your business and support your team. Y'all with me? Um, hey, Carolyn, nice to have you. Thanks for uh, the hearts. Rick says, Rich Dad, Poor Dad has a great story about it in hiring team members. Ooh, I have not read that book in a while. I will have to, that's a, that's a good one. I should revisit that, that book. Um, Kim says, I hear you on building a team. I recently hired a new team member to answer comments on YouTube. It's working out. Um, I love that you brought on a team member for that. By the way, Rick, I have a resource for you if you need um, anything for that because that um, I feel like we've created a whole system and process around that. So, so it's total side note, but since you're, since you're on live, um, if you reach out to me, I'll send that to you. I'm glad this is all resonating. Okay, so how do we do this, right? How do we facilitate that autonomy? How do we encourage autonomy? We know this is something that is proven. We know that this is going to help your team help you. It's going to create a more cohesive team. It's going to create a team that supports you and your business. It's going to generate better results in your business. And yet it's like, okay, autonomy, but also I need to lead. And how do I be control? How do I control that being controlling? I think this can be a little confusing. So what I love and the, the approach we take in my business that I encourage my clients to take as well. And this is something also proven, not by me, like just take all like, this is something that intuitively I was doing, but I think it's just so nice to see the research supports this. Adam Grant talks about this concept a lot. Um, and this is just a principle you can apply to your team. But what I like to do in my business and the approach we take is control the end result. So have control, have leadership, have ownership, have vision over the end result. Let go of control in the process. Control the end result, let go of control in the process. I think this works, and this is Adam Brand talks about this, so we'll give him, um, he's also another another brilliant one to go, behavioral, um, he's a behavioral scientist, um, great one to check out. 
So control the end result, let go of control in the process. I think this is a really great thing for us to think about, even outside of team, right? As business owners, if you think about the results you want in business, control that end result, let go of control in the process. So great for the creative process. So great if we're talking about manifesting. So great overall for how do you make money in business? I think just a general concept that also applies to your team. And so what, what like the philosophy we like to adopt with team is I want to control the end result. I also think it is my responsibility as a business owner, as someone leading a team, as a CEO, to control the end result, to be clear on what the end result is, to communicate that very clearly and specifically to my team, and to really be in ownership of the end result. And then let go of the process and the way in which anything I'm delegating and whatever that end result is, let go in the way in which my team creates that end result. So let me give some examples because I think this is one of those things where examples can make more sense. So a recent example in my business, I think many of you know, I gave away a free six week sales course. If you haven't signed up for it, get your butt signed up for it. I'll make sure we, we've turned this evergreen now. Um, I'll make sure I drop a, a link for that. Completely free, people have gotten excellent results from it. I'm really proud of it. I think. I think it is as valuable as some high-end courses you could pay a boatload of money for. Um, so side tangent, sign yourself up for this. So I ran this for free and then I wanted to turn this into an evergreen free course for you all. So I could keep having you have access to this. And I wanted this also to be a resource for my clients. So my team is currently working on turning this into a resource for my clients. To make this evergreen, there were a couple different steps we needed to do. I was in control of the end result. I was really clear on, I want this to be evergreen. I want this to live on my website. I want a couple couple specifics here. I was also really clear on, you know, what were the deliverables? What was the timeline? What were some of those specifics? It was my job as the CEO, as the leader to have that vision, right? It's not my team's job to figure out that I want this evergreen or what I want this to look like. That's my job. It was also my job to clearly communicate, like, super, 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 super clearly communicate. It's a whole nother conversation with leadership and with team. Clearly, clearly, clearly communicate what I was looking for and to spell out those specifics. And then when we're talking about here, like how do we facilitate autonomy? How do we help our people on our team not feel like we're controlling them and micromanaging them? Then it was my job to lead instead of manage and to let go of the reins and to say, then I don't really care how you make this happen. I just want the end result to happen. I don't really care if you do it differently than I would, how I would do it. I don't like, I get to let go of the control and the process in which they make this happen. I'm also here to support them if they have a question or if they're stuck on something um, or my OBM is, that's, that's her job as well. She leads instead of just simply managing. You know, we're there to support, but where you can help create and facilitate that autonomy with team, which again is that core human need, that psychological need that is going to help everyone on the team have more buy-in, get better results, is saying, I'm gonna control the end result, you control the process. If you wanna do this at two in the morning, that's cool. If you wanna do this all in one day, that's cool. If you want to, whatever way you're going to add this to the website or do these different things I asked for, if you have a different process or a different way to do it, I don't need you to follow my step-by-step -step way. I'm here to support you if you need that, but I can let go of the control of the process. And this way, I still get to be in control. I still, what was the GIF, um, the Beyonce GIF I shared? Um, I'm not bossy, I'm the boss. I still get to be the boss, right? I still get to feel that sense of control and ownership over the end result, but I can also give that autonomy to my team. And I think this is where we get out of micromanaging. I can be a leader and super, super, super clear on what I want. And I think that's something I'm always, um, I love you team. Like I'm always working on getting better and better, better communicating and more specific with what I'm looking for and my thought process around it because I think that's so valuable for a team. So I can do those things, right? That's my job as a leader, but I can still facilitate autonomy by then saying, okay, now you know the things, go off and do it your way. I don't need to sit over your shoulder and watch you do it. And I don't need you to do it the same way I would. In fact, you probably will do it better than the way I would anyway. Does that difference make sense? And can you see there how you get to have that balance of, you still get to have what you want. You still get to be in control. You still get to be the boss. 
and you can facil facilitate some of that autonomy, which is going to feel so much better for your people. I'll give um, another example, but I want to see comments here. Rick says, one of my favorite sayings, train them well enough that they can go and work somewhere else, treat them well enough that they stay. Hell to the fuck yes. I think that's so well, so, so well said. Um, I'm going to repeat that because this is, this is, this really speaks what we're talking about here. Train them well enough that they can go and work somewhere else. Treat them well enough that they want to stay. That's the whole goal with team, um, right? We want team that is so well oiled and so autonomous and you have so much trust with them, they could go and work somewhere else, right? I also like to always think like leave, leave people better than you found them. Um, and so I always want to think like if I'm leading and managing a team and I'm using the word managing lightly here, you know what I'm talking about here in terms of leadership. I want to leave my, like even if, we don't work together anymore. Even if they do go somewhere else, if they start their own business, whatever that is, I want to leave them better off than they found me because I have led them that well. It's my goal. Um, and I want to treat them so well and know things like autonomy as a way, facilitating autonomy, instilling trust in your people, letting you know that you trust them to go do their own thing. That is such a driver that also helps people to stay. I think sometimes like, treating them well enough to stay like yes praise yes money all of those things but i think we forget those are those external motivators so what we were talking about with, with point one in terms of like lead instead of instead of manage those are external motivators those are important but those aren't enough to want to keep people to stay and to get the best results then it comes back to those internal motivators and so if we're looking at internal motivation autonomy is an internal motivation that's a psychological need that people have so if you're facilitating that you're helping facilitate that internal motivation that keeps people where they're at. Um, that's also why kind of this, thank you, Rick, because um, this is really helpful in terms of like piggybacking here. I love when we get to have a conversation about this. This is also why, for example, one of the things like when I'm bringing team members on and when we're having those meetings, I'm so clear to say, you are the expert at what you do. I'm not here to be the expert of your role. I don't want to be the expert of your role. And I don't want my OBM to be the expert of your role. Like none of us are here to manage you. We're here to lead you in terms of like, it's my job again, going back to, I need to control the result. It's my job to have that vision and to lead. But I want all my people to be the expert of their own role. And that's that internal motivation. That's how you treat people well enough so they want to stay. And again, this just goes back to think about any area of your life outside of business if people treat you like you know what the fuck you're doing and give you the reins to do things your way, aren't you so much more likely to want to stay than when someone tells you you don't know what you're doing, you have to do it their way, and they remove that power from you and that autonomy from you? I mean, think of any, think of anywhere in life. I, like, would love an example where anyone's like, no, that felt really good, and I want to stick around for that, right? Um, Rick says, um, I love this. Uh, and says, thanks, Stephanie. I don't know what Stephanie said. I don't see all the comments y'all on here, um, but Stephanie, thanks for chiming in. Thanks for chiming in for this. Um, so let me give another example in terms of control the end result, let go of control in the process. Again, so we can see like, what is this dynamic between you get to have your control cake and eat it too, right? You get to still be in control without being controlling. You get to lead without strangle holding people, right? And still give them their autonomy. So um, I think another really easy example is, um, this was just an example in my business, but I think it's just one many can resonate or relate to here with things like graphics. Um, so I don't make the graphics um, unless I'm tinkering where I shouldn't. And that's whenever, whenever you see a typo in something, y'all, it's because I've, I've put my fingers in, in pots I shouldn't put them in. Um, or whenever you see something that doesn't look the way it's supposed to, that's because uh, I can put her her hands and stuff she shouldn't. That's kind of a side note though. I will say here's, this is such a side note from what we're talking about, but I do think this is helpful to say. I do think it's also really beneficial that um, I think there are times to bring on team when you don't know how to do everything yourself. And like I have clients who are like in a corporate job and it makes more sense for them to spend money on team. However, for many of us at the start of business, when we have more time than we do money resources. I think it makes a lot of sense to learn everything, even like at a basic level before you outsource it. I think it makes it so much easier to lead a team and to control the end result and let go of the process. It also means 
if someone's sick, it means you're never tethered to a team member. If someone's sick, if something happens, if um, you know something isn't working on the back end, it also means you're never handcuffed to anyone. You can always make changes if you need to. Such a side note, but I do think that's just an important thing that doesn't ever get talked about in the online space. I'm so grateful. I like. I need to keep my hands out of things, but I'm also so grateful. I know how to if I need to step in or or problem solve or, or be supportive instead of managing and micromanaging in any way. Um, but graphics are a great example. Um, my amazing OVM makes my graphics for me and the way she makes graphics might be very different than the way I do, right? So what my job is, is I wanna control the end result. I need to be really clear with her. What do I want from graphics? What do we need? What am I looking for? Um, I get to lead and be the CEO and visionary and be really clear on like some of those specifics I'm looking for, right? And then within, like after that, I get to let go of the process and how she makes them. I get to let go of the process even and know that she might do it very differently than I do. She might have a different creative process. She might also come up with things that are completely different than I would. And my job so that I can control the end result without controlling the process, so I can lead without strangleholding, my job is to see, am I getting that end result met? Yes, awesome. Then I get to let go and be completely okay with whichever way it's done, or if it looks a little different, which let's be real on, usually means better than I would do. But either way, I just get to be okay with this. Maybe this looks a little different than the way I would have done it. But that doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't mean it's bad. We're still getting that end result. And that's really my like the only part of the pie that I'm meant to hold. Um, let me know if that example makes, makes sense um, or if you have any questions. And so again, I think that's just helpful to think like what's your part of the pie to hold? What's actually important? What's important is the end result and communicating that. What's not important, the way that end result, like the process to the end result, if you can hold the end result very clearly and communicate that very clearly and then let go of that process, remember what's underneath this. Then what you're doing is you're giving back to your team that autonomy that is so, so, so important for that internal drive that supports your business. And here's the magical thing that, um, Daniel Pink talks about, not Adam Grant. So they're like, we're having like um, two, two really smart human um, sandwich here with the references we're making here. But um, Daniel Pink talks about this in terms of, of results. When people have that autonomy, people are able to think more creatively. That's when we get more creative solutions. Like all of the things you want from your team is facilitated when you help people feel that autonomy when you control the end result but let go of the process. Um, okay, so another, I'll give you one more example and then I think I think y'all get this, but I'll give one more example because I promise them, I think it's just helpful to see um, inside business. And I just wanna see if there's any questions. I don't think there's any more comments, but I know with Zoom, I see them a little late. So if you do have questions, let me know. Um, one other example here that I kind of hit on earlier, but I think this is, particularly important for all of us in the online space. So again, I have a few clients who have um, businesses that are offline. I mean, they use online marketing, but they're, you know, they're in an office or they have a team with them in real time. But for the rest of us online, most of our team members are working remotely. They're and this is so important to remember. I think it's always really helpful to remember they're not just working with you as well if they're a contractor. So they usually are juggling multiple clients. And many of, if you're working with a VA, an OBM, anyone like this, and you're working with them part-time on a contractor basis, they're usually in a different time zone. And one of the, they're juggling different multiple clients. And usually one of the reasons people choose a job like this is they want some sort of freedom, some sort of flexibility, that autonomy we're talking about, right? I think it's really helpful to keep these things in mind as you're leading a team. And remember, absolutely, you get to care about control the end result, right? You get to control, care about what you're asking for from team. I expect quality from my team. I expect, I expect a lot from my, my team. Um, and that's, I think, very fair. I'm, I'm paying them. And I think we want to keep these things in mind because it goes back to everything we're talking about here in terms of how do you manage and motivate your team without being a control freak? Um, how do you get that buy-in? How do you get people to stick around? I think if you can keep these things in mind, one of the last examples I'll give here is really with thinking about the hours and the time in which people do stuff. So one of the things I think can make business owners crazy, I hear this from clients of mine all the time, is wanting to control 
the time in which people are doing things. I'm not talking about deadlines. I'm not talking about like, this needs to be done by this time. We have a very clear deadline for deliverables. I'm talking about literally like from nine to 10 or thinking, well, I'm doing this right now. Like I, I'm going live at 6 p.m. My team should therefore be available at 7 p.m. to do whatever our process and system is for what we do with this live afterwards, right? I think we get almost stuck in the old corporate like nine to five world where it's you're working in an office. It's sort of like you're there from nine to five. So your time is someone else's. And I think we have to remember in, especially in the online space when you're working with remote teams and people who have multiple clients um, who are craving flexibility and autonomy, even if it wasn't a human need, um, they are, we're not working on a nine to five schedule. We're also working with different time zones. And so really allowing, this is where it's like, can you control the end result, but let go of the process? Letting go, what I think about is, I care about the end result. So the end result, after I finish this live stream, we have a process in terms of like, this gets downloaded, gets uploaded to YouTube, how we repurpose it. Like there's different steps everyone's gotta take on the back end. I really care about the end result, and what happens and our deadline and our timeline for when that goes out, which there's plenty of time for that. What I don't care about where I let go of the process and facilitate that autonomy and really keep in mind so I can like treat my people well so they wanna stick around, stick around is that process. And part of that process is like what it looks like. I don't really care literally what order they do things in. I don't care if they do it right after I'm finished with this live unless we have like a tight deadline, which I'm clear to communicate. Um, I don't care if it's happening right before I need it. I really don't care. Like I just let go of that. That's where I let go of the reins. And I'm really mindful where it's like also not my job then to like super micromanage and check in on things. You know, after we've gone through like the initial um, training and onboarding process, my job is to trust people and let them do their thing create that autonomy and just care about that end result and make sure I'm really clear and communicating what that end result is. And that also means things like timeline or things like how quickly someone's responding to me, as long as we're staying clear on that end result. So hopefully that example makes sense. I think that's that's one in particular for all of us, since most of you are probably, as you're bringing on team and growing on team, going to be working with people who, who are contractor base who are VAs, OBMs, who are working with other clients and who might be in different time zones. I think it's a really helpful one to remember and to remember the thinking and the why underneath, aside from like, it's nice. Um, and absolutely, like you still get to control that end result and have deadlines and deliverables. But remembering the more you can create some space around that process, the why underneath that, the thinking underneath that is that helps encourage and facilitate that autonomy, that freedom, which is a basic psychological need, but particularly for anyone in who's choosing to have a business doing that sort of work, we can assume that's probably going to be extra important for them. And that's just another way you can treat your people well. So you're leading instead of managing. So you can still have control without controlling. So you can support your team and help them help you to get those better results. And so they want to stick around. Um, Okay, I don't think I see any other comments here unless I'm just missing comments in general. So I'm assuming um, we don't have any other comments. Those are, I'll just give us a recap here. Those are really the, the two proven ways and they're absolutely proven. Again, this is proven from personal experience. And I see this with clients who have much bigger teams than me um, and smaller, smaller teams, but also just really proven by what the research and data says on human behavior. Two proven ways to manage your team without being a total control freak. One, really, I would invite you to think about shifting your mindset from management to leadership. So how can we get out of that controlling mindset and I need to manage and sit on top of people into how can I step into leadership, show up as the CEO, really think about how can I absolutely have those external motivation, those external drivers like paying people well, but remember that it's internal motivation that is going to drive people to show up and get the best results from, from your team. So how can you help support that by really standing in that role as a leader and a CEO and a visionary of your business? And then two, how can we look at facilitating that autonomy? And what we talked about here is looking at what Adam Grant talks about, control the end result, let go of control in the process. Play with those two things with your team, play with them outside of team. Like I think this is like, yes, this 
absolutely team, but I think this works for leadership in general. And I think this applies to so many things for my coaches. This applies to coaching. Um, I think this applies to so many areas of business. So play with us outside of business as well, because I think that'll give you really nice evidence to see how that works with team. And I think what will be really nice for all of you to put a button on this is the more you play with these kind of concepts that I think can be a little counterintuitive to what the corporate world is doing incorrectly, which is why there's a lot of problems in, in corporate America and why they don't always get the results they want and why there's a lot of businesses who look to shift this up in their leadership. Um, the more we can play with this, I think the more we can find ways to love business and love leadership. Because again, I think for many of you, many of you did leave corporate or are leaving corporate and don't want a nine to five and don't want to be in management and start your business to repeat any of those things you didn't like being on at the receiving end of. So I think it's really refreshing and helpful. I know it is for me to know we get to be heart-centered. We get to be passion-driven. We get to do things that really are in alignment with leadership and with all of the traits I think many of you have intuitively and want to step into. And that's also going to support your team to help them help you, but also really support the best results from your team and in your business. So I hope you will take that away from today's live. And then just as a general reminder for any of you who want support with bringing on team, managing a team, leading a team with your leadership, with your mindset in your business overall, and as well as your strategy around marketing sales to help you build, grow, and scale a profitable business that you freaking love on your terms. That is my jam. That is what I do. I'm excellent at what I do. I will drop a link. I would love to chat with you about how I can support you. My space is pretty full. We are pretty at capacity. We do have some spots opening up in the upcoming months. So be sure to book a call if you are interested in support so we can get you on my roster sooner rather than later. Love you all. I will be back next week with another topic for you. Thanks for hanging with me. Bye. Well, I got to hang, hang up. This isn't the phone. I've got to end on Zoom, not on Facebook. All right, there we go.